How words create worlds. This is the performatory talks with Lauren Knoll. Good morning, my name is Lauren, and I want to start off by saying that I have had an identity crisis. And as I would like to state it, um, I wasn't fitting into society, or society wasn't fitting me. And I guess I was having trouble with the fact that I didn't know if I wanted to call myself a feminist or not. And this is when I stumbled upon the research of words creating worlds. How was feminism going to fit me as a story? Let me explain it like this. If I have the word grandma, wolf, and a girl with a red tape, a cape, what is it that you think of? Little Red Riding Hood. Exactly, Little Red Riding Hood, also known as Hoodkapje in Dutch to make it a bit easier. Um, this is also known as a fake story. And this. What I created was a words create world. So the wolf, grandma, and girl with a red cape created for everybody the same story. It's a fixed story. And the story is Little Red Riding Hood. If, for example, somebody from Asia doesn't know the story, she could look it up or he could look it up or ask it to somebody that does know the story. And then it would just be exactly the same story, which means a fixed story. From an early childhood, um, we get hands worded to, um, hands words handed to us, and they all have a definition or a story, but we all have different interpretations. And um, what I am trying to say with this is that children before four or five do not have this social belief system yet. And there's been an experiment uh, from Jean Piaget. And what he explained, he might, you might know this experiment, uh, which is this. And what he did, he was in front of a child that was about uh, three years old. And he had two glasses in front of him. And he asked the child to pour the water up until they were an equal amount. And when it was an equal amount and the child said it was okay, he grabbed the glass, put it away, grabbed a thinner and higher glass, put it down, poured the glass with water in there, and then, although the child has seen everything what uh, Jean Piaget did, he asked the child again, which one is now, which one has more water in it? He still pointed at the child at the one, as you can see in C, at the higher and thinner glass. And what this means is that children are still very influenceable at this point uh, of time. And um, <coughs> so what you can do with this, you can steer this in a positive direction. And when you steer it in a positive direction, it can create a better communication and also empathy for the child. It can also go into a negative direction and then it can create teasing or even bullying. So when we come back to the uh, words create worlds from, um, from the Little Red Riding Hood, I want you to think now of a dog. Yes? Okay. So when you think of a dog, you might have had different interpretations because somebody can say, um, I'm thinking of my own dog right now, or others might have been bitten by a dog and have different interpretations. What I'm trying to say by this is that Again, words creating worlds, uh, words is the dog. And you all thought of something different with your emotions and your experiences. And then the story is for everybody the same. It is an animal wagging a tail and sticking its tongue out. But the world is different. And then I did an experiment with the word time, which could also represent the umbrella word dog, but now I use the word time. I asked six different people to send me a picture 
of time from Monday until Friday, so five days. As you can see here, this is a visualization of maybe interpretation you just now had of dog. But then this is time, and uh, somebody sent a picture of their grandma, or uh, a puppy, or even holes, which could represent the ticking of a clock. I'm just interpreting now in my way, but he or she maybe said it like something else. Um, this is a visualization of, again, the umbrella or dog, that you all have different interpretations. Except maybe for my parents and I, we probably think of the same dog. In my own experience, um, I have lived in uh, America, in the Netherlands, of course, I'm uh, Dutch, uh, and also in France and in Finland. And in my quest in um, searching for what feminism is, um, I did feel in America and in France that there was a hierarchy between uh, men and women. And in the Netherlands, except for the catcalls, uh, I do feel that there is a better way between, our, uh, between women and men. And then what I found out when I went to Finland is that I did not feel the need to defend myself for some reason. Or defend myself as a woman. This was the first time that I felt um, I was normal, which sounds really weird, probably, but I felt like it, it wasn't the topic of the day. The only uh, place where I found feminism as a topic was in the branding industry. And this is where I stumbled upon a article uh, which was talking about the book of Crispin, why I am not a feminist. And Within this, she, the book's point is not about her not being a feminist, but it is about the, that feminism has become a self-serving brand uh, popularized by CEOs and beauty companies. Somewhere along the line it, or way, it has become a, a, um, a brand or a universal. And what she states, and I quote, Feminism is a political argument of such obvious reason and power that it has been co-opted as an aesthetic and transformed into merchandise by a series of influential profiteers. And what this means is that companies, which were very smart, use feminism at its core for branding. And it's very smart because identifying with such a huge trend makes it easier to go to a or to reach a target group. And people do not just want to buy a product anymore. They want to feel something when they buy uh, the product or and they want to feel the brand. And two great examples of this are, for example, let me, are, for example, um, Nike. They just one month ago, they had the commercial of Crazy Woman. I'm not sure if you've heard of this. But it's about uh, women athletes who are crazy when they do sports. And for a man, it would be normal if they would do that. And for women, it would be crazy to be very passionate about their sport. And another one is always, and they had hashtag, the campaign hashtag like a girl. And they asked girls around the age of 16, 17, 18, what they thought would mean hitting like a girl or running like a girl and it would be something like oh oh it's so uh and then when they asked young children they would actually say well that just means running as hard as i can or hitting as hard as i can just like a guy can do it so what they want to show is that it's not just uh, that it's not an insult it just becomes an insult when we grow older and these two uh, examples were also for me very touching and um when we come back then to the theory of words creating worlds, I believe that the word feminism, why I am scared to call myself feminist, it does not have, a, have one story. Everybody interprets it in a different way, but feminism is not an umbrella word. Like I said, uh, dog was. <coughs> feminism, some people think that that would mean, I've had a lot of reactions like this, that, oh, Lauren, you think you're better than men. That's what that means, right? Or you're crazy. And for me, feminism means something totally different. 
So I believe that feminism does not have a story, and that means that there is misplaced judgment. What I am trying to say here today, and what I'm trying to conclude, is that I do believe that feminism is a great way to use in a branding strategy. Also, of course, for the money, but also to reach your target audience. And I do believe that it has created a platform for women to feel empowered and to step out of the shadow of men. But where I want to transform and where I want to um, start maybe my final exhibition for next year is to um, go to a company such as Nike, a big branding place where I can go to and challenge them to not just use feminism anymore, because I do believe that feminism is important, but I do believe at some point feminism will fade, that equal, equality between men and women will be normal. And I want, want to see if we can be faster than a trend that is called feminism and create a new trend within the branding to um, have the uniqueness of men and women in one branding place. And you could see this as a personality change, which means that you start acknowledging that it is incredibly hard to change somebody's personality, but that you have to push away or accept the feelings of discomfort or anxiety. And afterwards, you can make a concrete goal. It's what I, this is what I want to do when I go to a company uh, with the branding. And from these concrete goals, make little steps and the only thing I then still need is the time, of course, support, energy, and self-compassion. And then transformation can begin. Thank you.